Welcome to Science with Mrs. Crane. Today what we're going to look at is how to de decompose a carbonate. Today I've picked the carbonate, copper carbonate. It's a beautiful green colour and the reason I like to pick it is because it does spectacular colour changes which highlights um, the reaction going on here. So to start with, uh, we light our Bunsen burner. Copper carbonate is a chemical that can be decomposed using heat. So we turn it to the blue flame. And you can see I've actually got it pointing away from me because by no means do I want this shooting out and hitting me. Uh, in the other end, I like clamping it. There we go. In the other end, I'm going to put the gas coming out of this reaction into a test tube which is here, this is filled with lime water. So the gas that's produced from this is going to bubble through it and we're going to notice a change from this clear colour to a different colour. So if you can see in that, there is bubbling occurring here. At the same time, the green colour is disappearing and I'm getting a black powder. Excellent. Alright, so that's that practice. Quite easy, quite simple. Already you can see the two things that are happening here. The first thing that's happening here is my Copper carbonate is no longer green, it's now black. And my lime water, which there's a gas made from this, and that gas has made the lime water, which was clear, gone or cloudy. There's two reactions that are happening here. The first one is the copper carbonate is being decomposed into copper oxide. And the CO2 that's left from this has been sent up as a gas, and I've captured it in the lime water and this is a positive test for carbon dioxide gas and you can see that it's changed this cloudy colour that's actually signifying that there is a solid that has been formed that doesn't dissolve in water. This solid is calcium carbonate because lime water is calcium hydroxide. So I'll show you the um, chemical equations for this later on. So positive test we've now formed calcium, um, calcium carbonate in here which is solid and the rest of it's left off is water. I'm going to put that aside. And we're going to have a look at another little test you can do in here just for fun. Um, but a beautiful example of another chemical change. So I'm going to twist this up. Just move the side of it. Okay. So if I get some sulfuric acid and I put some of this copper oxide in. It's still a bit of copper carbonate, but we'll just see and I put it in and I let it mix in a bit. I've put it in sulfuric acid, H2SO4, and you notice that the H2SO4 has suddenly gone light blue color. And if I do the same thing with hydrochloric acid, put some powder in, fizzes, remember it's really hot too. Um, I should see a different color coming up again, a blue color. Let me put some more back in here. So what you're seeing, two reactions happening here, in the, sulf in the chloride you're getting copper chloride forming and in the sulfuric acid you're getting copper sulfate and you'll notice a light blue, like a uh, light aqua blue colour in the copper chloride and you're getting a, um, a deeper blue colour in the copper sulfate. They're both fairly weak solutions here um, but it's a good example of what's going on here. So we've just seen how to decompose a carbonate and the chemical changes that we saw were a green powder turning into a black powder and then we did some other fancy chemistry with that too. So to start off with, with the decomposition of a carbonate that we did, we had copper carbonate. Remember that the carbonate is a polyatomic ion, okay, but it can be broken up into carbon dioxide and leaving an oxygen behind. So in this reaction, we see copper carbonate 
a solid, been decomposed into copper oxide, another solid, and it releases carbon dioxide gas. We actually did the test for this as well. The carbon dioxide gas that we tested uh, was tested using calcium hydroxide, which is lime water. And when we added the carbon dioxide to it, sorry, that's aqueous, it's a solution. Um, when we added the carbon dioxide gas to it, we produced calcium carbonate. And that was a solid that we saw, which made the lime water cloudy. And we also got uh, water left over, which is a liquid. Okay, so what we actually saw there is this powder was black. Oh, sorry. That powder was green. And when it reacted with heat, we just heated it and it's unstable enough to break down into this black compound and this gas. Uh, in this case, when we tested the gas, we had a clear solution. And the clear solution with this gas formed a white solid, uh, also known as a precipitate. that's what we call it, um, and a clear liquid water. So the colour change going from green to black is one indicator of a chemical change, uh, and also the production of a gas is another in indication that a chemical change has taken place. The other thing we saw is we got a clear solution, and when it reacted with this gas that we bubbled through it, um, it didn't actually come from this reaction, it came from this reaction. And we can see from the gas tube the bubbles came through. That created uh, a white solid within that clear liquid. And there was still a clear liquid left over. So that precipitate is another example of a chemical change. Afterwards, we did another bit of interesting chemistry. And this is just for fun, because chemistry is fun, and making compounds and mixing things is good fun. We actually took this copper oxide and we added one of two chemicals. The first one I tried, I showed you, was sulfuric acid, H2SO4, and that's another solution. We call that an aqueous, so AQ. When those two reacted together, we ended up producing copper sulfate, and that is a solution. That's a beautiful blue solution. This is colourless. So the second reaction we saw with the copper oxide and the sulfuric acid is when we reacted it together, we got our copper sulfate, which is a blue solution. And we also got the hydrogen here combining with the oxygen here and producing water. Um, the other one we saw was we had copper oxide and we use hydrochloric acid and that was again aqueous. In that case we didn't form copper sulfate, instead the chloride ion joined with the copper and we formed copper chloride. Now uh, this is copper 2 so that means we need two chlorines to balance that positive 2 charge on copper. Uh, and this was another nice blue solution. Okay, And again, we make water because we have hydrogen and oxygen. But this time, you might notice that it doesn't quite balance out. On this side, I have only one oxygen, and that's fine. And on this side, I have only one hydrogen. But over here, I need two. I also have only one chlorine, and over here, I need two. So this is where balancing equations comes in, because I can't suddenly produce an extra chlorine or an extra hydrogen when there wasn't any to begin with. So we need to multiply this equation, this formula, by two. Um, now we have two hydrogens 
and two chlorines. Think about, you know, expanding um, parentheses in mass. Same sort of process here. Two hydrogen, two chlorine. And now we have enough hydrogen on this side. We have two hydrogen here and the two chlorines here. So we've finally balanced that equation. The two has to go in front because a little number after would be changing um, the whole, the chemical structure. So the actual formula of HCl is just a H and a Cl bonded to each other. So there's no two hydrogens or two chlorines in the individual structure, in the individual compound or molecule here. So instead we just need two of those molecules. And there are the reactions that we saw today.